Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin. So this has an introduction by Chelsea Kane. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... In this classic thriller, Ira Levin imagines Dr. Joseph Mengele's nightmarish plot to restore the Third Reich. Alive and hiding in South America 30 years after the end of the Second World War, Mengele gathers a group of former colleagues for a sinister project, the creation of the Fourth Reich. Aging Nazi hunter Yakov Lieberman is informed of the plot, but before he hears the evidence, his source is killed. Spanning continents and inspired by true events, what follows is one of Levin's most masterful tales, both timeless and chillingly plausible. And the uh, introduction by Chelsea Kane was fantastic. There are a few things that I want to write down here. So she goes, raise your hand if you love Nazis. Personally, I can't get enough of them. When I was a kid in the 80s during the Cold War, all the bad guys were bushy eyebrowed Soviets in drab clothing. They were always showing up in novels or TV shows, looking for American military secrets and speaking in thick Russian accents. The men and women looked the same. Sometimes they wore fur hats. Mostly they were portrayed as pasty alcoholics. They wore ugly shoes. They were always threatening to send each other to Siberia. Talk about unsatisfying. Then she talks about how movie Nazis look great and she says, mostly though, Nazis were scary. They killed children. They made lamps out of people. They didn't feel bad about it. They were capable of anything. And I like this, he says, In the Boys from Brazil, Levin ups the ante by creating an antagonist who is not only a Nazi, but a real life one. The death camp psycho doctor and twin sewer-upper, Joseph Mengele. Mengele was still at large when the book came out in 1976, holed up in the jungles of South America, where he died free and unapologetic in 1979. Not fair, we were cheated. If we could not hunt him down in life, then Levin provided us with the next best thing. We could hunt him down in fiction. Not as sweet, but still mighty cathartic. And I love this, I actually posted this on Instagram. She writes, People ask me a lot why I write thrillers. I think they mean, how did such a nice seeming lady decide to write a book in which someone's small intestine is, is extracted with a crochet hook? I make up different answers, but here's the truth. It's fun. Ira Levin taught me that. So on to the novel proper now. So I like this, uh, and this is Mengele brief in his men. He says, you'll be leaving Brazil with new identities, he said, and touched the briefcase at his side. Everything's here, genuine stuff, not forgeries. And you'll have ample funds for the two and a half years. In diamonds, he smiled. Which I'm afraid you'll have to take through customs in the uncomfortable way. Pop them up, your bum! We get a reference to a novel electronic ping pong game, which would be like the first generation of pong machines. I love stuff like that because it helps you to, um, you know, sort of set the time in the scene. Someone calls somebody a shitty little F word with it being the slur for homosexual people. So that was not good, but they are bad guys, so fuck them. We just get the line, someday he thought, I would like to meet a monster who looks like a monster. And here we get uh, basically these orphan boys. They discover these orphan boys or whatever have been being adopted. And Lieberman says, don't you know where they came from? Originally, I mean, the boys from Brazil. Hence the title. And I thought that was clever because it talks about that, that refers to the children, but also the boys from Brazil could be the Nazis themselves as well. And they start to think that uh, Mengele has been trying to make these, these twins that have been adopted clones of himself. And that is the point at which I realized they're clones of somebody else. And the clue is, I mean, you know. And so yeah, they get the potential that there are, there could be 94 Hitlers, that there are at least 94 boys with the same genetics as Hitler, but then there's a lot of that argument about nature versus nurture, you know? Really interesting stuff, to be honest. And then we get this, which is a very American thing. Marvin Farb gave him a copy of the hospital bill. He looked at it, stared at Farb. And this is cheap, Farb said. In New York, it would have been twice this. Got him, Himmel which means God in heaven. Um, and obviously we have the NHS here in the UK, so if you get shot, you don't have to pay for your own treatment. But yes, um, The Boys from Brazil, it was really interesting. As I say, this whole like nature versus nurture thing, I also do enjoy Nazis. It was a little bit longer than it needed to be, which is funny because the previous two Ira Levens that I've read, I thought were too short for what they needed to be. Um, but it was really interesting to see him take on a different type of thing. Levin was also Jewish, although he was an atheist Jew, but he was like born into a Jewish family, which I think means he can write about Nazis and the Holocaust and all of that stuff is a bit more own voices, you know? It's something I personally wouldn't want to touch because I, I don't feel as though I have a right to try and tell a story based on something so awful. Um, but yeah, I'm a bit of, I do enjoy like learning about the Second World War and stuff as well, so this was just interesting from that point of view. Overall, I gave The Boys From Brazil by Ira Levin, uh, probably a strong 3.5 out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought about this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.